All right, right. We're gonna continue the practice test. So we are in problem fourteen. Um, you have the variable on both sides, six z and three z. So we're gonna bring one of them to the other side. First, I'm gonna circle the plus side. This plus side belongs to seven. Three z itself is positive, so we're gonna do is minus three z on both sides. That will give us three z minus five greater than seven. And we're gonna move five to the other side, so add five on both sides. That will be three z greater than twelve. Three z greater than twelve. We divide both sides by three. Z greater than four. Z greater than four. So the answer is A. Number fifteen. Same concept. You have W on both sides. Okay, for me, normally I'm gonna move from right to left, but I choose to move five W to six W because six minus five give you positive one. If you move six to the five, you will get negative one instead. All right, so we move five to the six. Um, we subtract five, not because of this negative. This negative belongs to seven. Five itself is positive. So that's why we subtract 5w. So negative 7 greater than 1w minus 21. Make sure you bring down the negative sign of number 7. Okay, then we move 21 to the other side. We're going to add 21 on both sides. That will give us 7, 21 take away 7, 3, 4, 14. 14 greater than 1w. 14 greater than 1w. If you want, we can divide by 1 on both sides. We don't have to. Some of you just see that 1w is w. And um, we want to keep the variable on the left side. So I'm going to take this piece. I'm going to spin it. That will give you w less than 14. w less than 14. The answer is C. All right, we're going to move down to number 16. 16, so we have parentheses, mean that you need to multiply or to distribute the number in front of parentheses. However, in front of our parentheses right now, there's no number. We just have the sign negative. Okay. Um, I would tell you distribute the negative sign, but some of you don't understand that concept. How about we add 1 in front of parentheses, so we distribute the negative 1. It's just the same idea of distributing negative 5. So, sorry, negative sign. So we have 4r, we bring it down. Negative 1 times negative 5 is negative, negative 1 times positive 5 is negative 5r. Five negative 1 times positive 3 is negative 3. Greater than or equal to negative 22. We have 4r minus 5r. Uh, I have quite a common mistake here. Some of you do the opposite direction, adding 5r on both sides. Keep in mind that you both are on the left side, so they are on the same side. We don't do add on both sides or subtract on both sides. We just simply combining like term. 4r minus 5r is negative 1r minus 3 greater than or equal to negative 22. So to get r by itself, I need to move the 3. So since 3 is negative, you're going to add 3 on both sides. Negative 1r greater than or equal to uh, negative, I would say, 19. Okay, negative 1r greater than or equal to negative 19. So we need to get rid of the negative sign. Negative 1 and r side by side mean that they multiply. We're going to do is divide by negative 1 on both sides. So r less than or equal to positive 19. And remember, don't forget this. When you divide or multiply by a negative number, we flip the inequality sign. So the answer for this one is a, 16a. Okay. Which compound inequality has the solution set show in the graph? So as you see that our graph, we have um, the solution start from negative 2 to 3. So either x 
I would say x um, two three so x less than three any number less than three will be your solution and any number greater than equal to negative two okay we have equal sign because it's a, a closed circle this is open circles that why we don't have a, a, an equal sign underneath of inequality pretty much it so for the solutions for the mo the choices that we have they use y instead of x that's fine we can use any term negative 2 less than equal to x less than 3 so the answer should be b okay so number 18 we're gonna get x by itself so for this problem we have three different sides First, I'm going to do is uh, move away the net positive 5 by subtract 5 on three sides. We have three sides now. Uh, by doing that, we will have positive 5 and negative 5 cancel each other out. Leave you 3x less than or equal to negative 4 subtract 5. They're both negative. You add them, give you negative 9. 17 minus 5 give you positive 12. Then we keep going, get rid of 3, sin 3x side by side, mean they multiply. We're going to divide by 3 on all three sides. Negative 9 divided by 3 is negative 3, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 4. Uh, for some reason, they have the equal sign in the first, um, first inequality sign. It wasn't equal there, so um, I'm going to erase that. Okay, one more time because of this inequality sign is just less than, so it has to be less than. I make a mis I make a mistake. I put the equal sign there. All right, so Al's answer look like answer D. The answer is D. All right, number nineteen. Number nineteen. Nineteen. Okay, so we have a multiple answer here. Uh, x minus 1 greater than 3, x minus 1 less than 3, x minus 3 greater than 1, and x minus 3 less than 1. So we can do... Um, I would say that we can pick one answer and then solve for x. If it doesn't work, we're going to check with the other answer. Uh, that is the best way. And that's just the, the easier way to explain it to you. Okay, let's say I would check answer A. X minus 1 greater than 3. X minus 1 greater than 3. So, when you solve the inequality with the absolute value, there's two cases. If it's greater than... I should write a note. If it's greater than, um, that will be or. If it's less than, that will be n. The trick that I use for this is um, I don't. If I don't know or n, I'm gonna put the the alphabet a before o, and then I throw my inequality sign in the between. So this will point me to use um, or instead of n. So x minus 1 greater than 3 or x minus 1 less than negative 3. We're going to solve for x. <clears throat> so add 1 on both sides, x greater than 4 and plus 1 on both sides, x less than negative 2. Uh, and since it's the or problem, It's going to be neg negative 2 go first and then 4. Negative 2, they go to the left side with a, an open circle. And as 4 is go to the right side also with an open circle because they don't have the um, equal sign. Oh, so coincidentally, answer A is the correct answer.
Okay, so for the graph, um, when it goes to both direction, I we know that it has to be an or problem. So the only k is going to be or when it's greater than or equal to, greater than or greater than or equal to. So possible answer for number 9, if we didn't solve this, is maybe A or C. One of those answers, either A or C. But since we already solved for A and they are correct answers, so that's it. We don't need to do C. Okay, problem 20. Okay, um, which solution of the graph um, of the solution set when x greater than 0 or x less than 84. So greater than 0 and less than 84. So 0 and negative 4, negative 4 will go first and then 0. Negative 4 we go to the left, open circle, and at 0 we go to the right, open circle. So that's how the graph look like. Uh, they both open circle, so it's going to be D. All right, number 21. A number is added to 7, the result, and then multiplied by 6. To give the new result is 69, what is the number? All right, so the strategy that we have to do is, that's the strategy that you need to do is read it slowly, sentence by sentence. A number is added to 7. So I'm going to have a number, let's say x, added to 7, so plus 7. The result then multiply by 6. So all they mean is whatever this one is, we're going to use the parentheses because we have to add them first. We're going to multiply by 6 to give the new result is 96. So this equal to 96. What is that number? So that's it. The number added to 7. The results, so use parentheses, multiply by 6 equal to 96. So we saw for x like usual, you're going to Distribute 6 into parentheses, 6x plus 42 equal to 96. Then we subtract 42 on both sides. So that will give us 6x equal to uh, 54. Yes, then we divide by 6 on both sides. x will equal to 636 and 8. 54 divided by 6 is 8. That's it. Okay. Number 22, like the multiple choice, we're going to solve this one as usual. Distribute 8 into parentheses. a n plus 8 minus 2 n. Bring down 6 n plus 8. Then we're going to combine like term on each side. On the left side, 6 n plus 8, then no like term to add. But on the right side, we have 8 n and 2 n. That will give us 6 n. Okay, then we bring down the rest, 8 and 6n plus 8. Okay, so we keep going solving for this. We're going to move the variable on the same side. We're going to subtract 6n on both sides. Again, because the plus sign belongs to 8, 6n itself is positive. So you subtract 6n on both sides. 6n cancel out with 6n on both sides. You have 8 equal to 8. This is a true statement. So when it's true, you have infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many solution. Solutions. This is my arrow. Okay. Alright. Number 23. Determine where each solution is correct. If the solution is not correct, describe the error and give the correct solution. If the solution is correct, justify and prove that solution is, is correct. So basically this problem want you to solve the problem and then check the answer with each problem A, B, and C. Alright, problem A we have 2G plus 5 equal to 22 so we're going to distribute 2 and 2 parentheses. That will be 2g plus 10 equal to 22. We subtract 10 on both sides. That will give you 2g equal to 12. And we divide by 2g equal to 6. Alright, so, so far they didn't finish the answer. They have 2g equal to 17. That's wrong answer already. So follow the step. 
Step one, they did it correctly, like us. Then they distribute two into parentheses, two G plus five. We have plus ten, so that was the step was wrong. Okay, part B. We're gonna go to part B. Five D equal to two D minus eighteen. So first, we're gonna move D to the same side. We subtract two D on both sides. The reason we subtract. This negative belongs to 18 and 2D is positive, so that's why you subtract 2D on both sides. That will give you 3D equal to 18, negative. And we divide by 3 on both sides, D equal to negative 6. Good job, part B is correct. Part C, negative 6Z plus 13 equal to 7Z. We're going to move 6z to the other side, so we add 6z on both sides. That will give us 13 equal to uh, 13z. Then we divide by 13 on both sides. That will give us 1 equal to z. Alright, so answer C is wrong. The reason is 7 minus 6. Oh, it was negative here, so then you should add 6z on both sides, not subtract 6z. So that's where the answer was wrong. You're supposed to add. Number 24. Okay. Camille has no more than $30 to spend on each week, to spend each week for lunch and bus fare. Lunch costs four dollar each day, and bus fare is zero point seventy five cents each ride. Write the inequality for this solution. Can Cameo buy lunch five times and ride the bus eight times in one week? Just to find your answer. All right. So she has thirty dollars. So we know that she she had no more than thirty dollars. So thirty dollars is the max. That she can spend each week. Uh, we know that the lunch costs four dollar each day. The bus fare is zero point seventy five cent each ride. Um, Ryan inequality for this situation, okay. And the question is, can she, can she, buy five buy lunch five time and ride the bus eight times? Ooh, interesting. So the lunch is four dollars, so it's going to be four dollars for lunch. We don't know how many lunch. We know that this is an elf, and um, bus fare is zero point seventy five cents. Zero point seventy five cents. Sorry, zero point seventy five dollars, which is seventy five cents for the bus. I'm going to be say B. Okay, so. Can Cameo buy lunch five times? Okay, so first they ask you to write inequality. So we're not done yet. So four dollars lunch plus seventy five cents for the bus is no more, which means it has to be less than or equal to thirty dollars. So this is the inequality equation. Inequality that we're looking for. Inequality quality. That we're looking for. All right, can she buy five lunch and ride the bus eight times? So all we need to do is plug them in. Four dollars, uh, four dollars times five plus zero point seventy five times eight. Will that less than equal to thirty? So we're gonna check the answer. So four times five is twenty. Twenty dollars for sure. 0 0.75 times 8, uh, 0 0.75 times 8, 8 times 5 is 40, remember 4, 8 times 7 is 56, 56 plus 4, 56 plus 4 is 60, so there's two number after decimal point, so you move the decimal point forward, so that's a $6, less than equal to 30, is that true? 20 plus 6 is 26, less than or equal to 30. That is a true statement. So the answer is yes, Camille can buy lunch 5 times and ride a bus 8 times in one week because she just spent $26. Okay, so 
uh, please go ahead and write the final answer in complete sentences by use your own word. Okay, number 25. Number 25. So solve the graph of the following compound inequality. Solve and graph the following compound inequality. Okay, so there's two ways to do this. Um, and I'm, I prefer to do my way because I like this that way. It's easier and it's help you see, uh, see and practice the absolute value inequality. So my way, I'm going to break it down in two cases. Case one, I'm going to cover the this side. I have my first equation, negative 4 less than negative 3x plus 5. Then I'm going to do is cover the other side. I will have k2, negative 3x plus 5 less than or equal to 23. And then we're going to solve each of them. So subtract 5 on both sides, that's give you negative 9 less than negative 3x. Then we divide by negative 3 on both sides, that will give you positive 3 greater than x. One more time, don't forget when we divide by a negative number, you flip an equality sign. Okay, the last step, since x on the right side, we need to keep it on the left. We're going to spin, spin the whole thing, that will be x less than 3. And we're going to graph that. On this side, we're going to get 3x by itself, so minus 5 on both sides. Negative 3x less than or equal to 23 minus 5 is 18. Okay, then we divide both sides by negative 3. x greater than or equal to negative 6. Divide by negative number, you flip inequality sign. But we don't spin them this time because x already on the left side. Alright, so at 3, at 3, right here, we go to the left side. And it's open circle. At negative 6, at negative 6, we can go to the right side. Since there's an equal sign there, that's going to be a closed circle. Okay, so, so x, this is the end problem, so x is going to be between the intersection, so the intersection is from negative 6 to uh, 3, negative 6x between less than or equal to, greater than or equal to negative 6 and less than 3, if you want to write an interval notation that would be negative 6 bracket to 3 parentheses. You can give me either um, that two answers. Ooh, number 20, 26. Uh, for question 27, solve inequality and then graph the solution. So we have 26, there's no 27. So I believe this should be the instruction for 26. Alright, so this is greater than and I don't know an or, or problem, I'm going to put it out. So put the inequality sign between, they're going to point it to me as the or problem. Uh, there's two cases, x minus 2 greater than or equal to 1, x minus 2 less than or equal to negative 1. So k2, we have to flip inequality sign and change the sign of the number. Alright, so we're going to do is add 2 on both sides. That will give me x greater than or equal to 3. And this one, we add 2 on both sides. x less than or equal to 1. So, at 1, x go to the left side. And add 3. And it's a closed circle because there's equal sign. Add 3 is go to the right side, since there's an equal sign, that would be a closed circle. Alright, so your answer is for all x, where x less than or equal to 1, or x greater than or equal to 3. 
If you give me interval notation, that would be negative infinity to 1, bracket, union from 3 to positive infinity. Alright, number 26, uh, that is the last problem. Um, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please ask me a um, question in class. Or you can come to the tutoring hour. It's every day in the morning and on Thursday, after school on Thursday and Friday. It looks like our test will fall into either Thursday or Friday. Um, it's a long test. We may spend two days on this one. Alright, thanks everyone for watching and good luck. Have fun studying.